For over 200 years, man has flown through the atmosphere. However, it has been proven physiologically that we are best suited to live in conditions from sea level to 10,000 feet. When humans expose themselves to altitudes above 10,000 feet, certain physiological changes occur. This program will focus on the different types of hypoxia and how it affects the overall body function. Hypoxia is a known cause or contributing factor in aviation incidents and accidents. When altitude increases, the pressure of oxygen decreases, reducing the amount of oxygen carried in the blood. The ability of hemoglobin to carry oxygen is called the blood oxygen saturation, which is normally 95 to 98 percent at sea level. A decrease in blood oxygen saturation is measurable as we ascend. Hypoxia is an oxygen deficiency in the blood and affects every cell, especially the brain and nervous system. There are four types of hypoxia. Let's examine each of them. Hypoxic hypoxia, also known as altitude hypoxia, is the most common form of hypoxia in aviation and occurs due to a drop in oxygen pressure at the lung level. Hypoxic hypoxia can be caused by a decrease in the pressure of oxygen in the inspired air that can result from altitude exposure, strangulation, or respiratory arrest. In the aviation environment, hypoxia can occur when flying an unpressurized aircraft above 10,000 feet. Other causes of altitude hypoxia can be linked to failure of the aircraft oxygen systems or the improper use of that equipment and or failure of the pressurization system. Stagnant hypoxia occurs at the circulatory level. It's defined as a condition that interferes with the normal circulation of the blood arriving at the cells. Stagnant hypoxia can occur as a result of cardiac arrest, shock, exposure to cold, and sudden changes in posture, such as standing up after a prolonged rest. Aerobatic and agricultural flying expose pilots to acceleration forces, commonly called G-forces, that can result in this type of hypoxia at the brain level. Hypemic hypoxia is caused by a reduction in the oxygen-carrying capacity of the blood and occurs at the blood level. Anemia, bleeding, and some prescription drugs can cause hypemic hypoxia. Carbon monoxide exposure due to smoking or cabin contamination with engine exhaust fumes can also cause this type of hypoxia. Histotoxic hypoxia occurs at the cell level. Histotoxic hypoxia interferes with the normal utilization of oxygen in the cells. Alcohol and drugs are two items that can bring about this condition. Individual response to hypoxia varies. Your hypoxia symptoms may develop so gradually that they are well established before you recognize them. Hypoxia symptoms are most noted at cabin altitudes above 10,000 feet. This program, coupled with a flight in an altitude chamber, will better train you to recognize your personal hypoxic symptoms. Hypoxia reactions can be classified into two types. Signs of hypoxia can be detected in an individual by an observer or other crew members. Symptoms of hypoxia are the sensations perceived by the crew member. Keep in mind that there are certain hypoxic reactions that can be classified as both signs and symptoms. Some common signs of hypoxia are an increase in depth and rate of breathing. Cyanosis, a bluing effect of the skin most noticeable on the lips and the fingernail beds. Delayed reaction time. Poor judgment. Loss of muscle coordination. Some of the common symptoms of hypoxia are air hunger, a feeling of not enough breathable air, feeling of apprehension or anxiety, mental confusion, 
fatigue, nausea, headache, dizziness, hot and cold flashes, tingling, mainly in the extremities, visual impairment with respect to color vision, night vision, blurred and tunnel vision. There are some important points to remember concerning hypoxic signs and symptoms. They